Danny Gray uh, has been improving in camp. He doesn't dominate practices with five or six catches, but every other day he'll catch a touchdown, a really long one, and that's why they brought him in. It's funny. They don't even like – it's not like he's not getting open. Or it just They just call deep shots for him. <laughs> he, he just He's not getting the ball, but you realize Kyle's going to call this at some point today. That's his job. And today he caught it seven on seven, um, really nice. And when he wins, he wins by a lot. I mean, he plays hella fast. Yeah. And again, I, I don't know if he's going to be a starter like Emmanuel Sanders or like a, a complete receiver, but taking a guy that late in the draft, if he can do this, it could be a successful pick. What do you see from Danny Gray? I love it. And and I when I went, you know, Jesse and I, I know Marco Martinez, we did a live show on um, the draft when it happened. He was my, that was my pick. Uh, at that last pick of the third round, we, and uh, uh, I wasn't, I, I wasn't picking TDP before that, but the, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think for what he does, he was my 10th rated receiver in a good receiver class in this draft. Oh, and to get him at, in a, in a stacked receiver class at that point to have him come in, what, what I wrote about earlier this week is what he, he's again, another confident guy. You get him in front of a mic, he's not one of those guys, it's like, yeah, he has swagger, but it's not like this unfounded kind of machismo that's just like, you know, I, I'm better than anybody. I just feel like why they got to say, like, you really believe that's how he is. And then when he's in games, like, he's shown already in practices and in games in the big moment, he's making those big plays. And he and, and he's getting open. I felt like in the game, he only, you know, only had two catches, but like 99 yards, right? There are other situations where, you know, that one outplay to – um it just the timing was a little bit off. People are arguing about whether it was a little bit late. Know, it was a little bit like wide. Yeah. Let it go. I know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I know. It doesn't. So yeah. it's like those little things like Danny Gray's getting open. Like, and that's what's really cool is to see. It's like he's not just going to be a vertical threat. Like he is going to be a guy yeah. that can be at other levels of the field. And he's not going to be expected to. Now, talking to some other people I trust, I still feel despite like I really have big hopes for Danny Gray. I don't know if you are banking on him being like this bona fide wide receiver three, like a two, a two B kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like like, and so, so if IU goes down, if, if Debo goes down, do the Niners really have like an, if one of those guys, not everybody, and people will say, well, that's no. every team. Well, that's no. true, but we're, we're nitpicking. Okay? Ray Ray's not a starter. Juwan's no. not a starter. Danny's Juwan not, a starter. not a starter. They're all great. Like, no. Some number three receivers who can play in specific yeah. situations, but not all the time, not every snap. No, and I because I look at a guy like John Jennings who got a lot of run last year from fans, and I think he's a really tough guy, a, a fun guy to cheer for, but he's not he doesn't have the game breaking speed. People talk about like, oh, he's a big slot, like an Anquan Bolden. Like, he's been having trouble catching the ball. And he's and, gonna lose snaps to Ray Ray because Ray Ray is a big part of this offense. Yeah, and everybody knows that Ray Ray has fumbled in the past, but again. I'll tell you this, <laughs> you can't have that, but I'd rather have a guy that has the ability to be a playmaker consistently. And, he and can then contribute if the run things game. happen, you can go in Kyle's doghouse because you know Kyle's not immune to yeah. putting somebody there. But, yeah, I, I don't. Danny Gray, I really love him. I think it's mm -hmm. he's exceeded expectations for a third-round compensatory pick, and I don't think it's fair to say he's going to be a, a game-breaker like every Sunday, but – let me say what I like about Danny Gray, um, whether or not he's a starter. He's the first Niners wide receiver I can remember that legitimately is a burner. Like oh. growing up as a fan when I was a kid, uh, I mean, I've followed these guys, these, this team's drafts every year since I was a kid. And every time they draft a wide receiver, it's like, well, he runs a four five, but he, he, yeah. you know, it's like, but Jerry Rice ran a four six. It's like, oh, yeah. no, no, you need, and it's like, oh, this guy's really fast. He runs a four four eight. Like, no, the fastest guy they ever got was like AJ Jenkins. And that's none of that speed ever translated. So to no. actually see the Niners draft a guy who runs a four three three and it shows, I'm like, damn, like, what have they been doing the last 25 years? Wow. Yeah, and, anyway. and I think that's what I was I want to make very clear. I was not ragging on Danny Gray. Like I absolutely love Danny Gray. I really do. I've, I've wrote about it. I've talked. I've tweeted a lot about it. What I'm saying is what I didn't think was fair is that I I don't think it's. I mean, if he wants if he wants that pressure, awesome. I just don't think that he needs to be looked at as a guy that has to go carry the team on his back as as that top end receiver. The the team isn't expecting him to. So what I'm saying, like I don't. I'd be nice to 
Yeah. Uh, where he factors in on regular, like how many snaps do you think Danny Gray is going to get Grant? Uh, early on, not a lot, but I think here's the thing. What he showed in this game uh, Friday is that he can get open. He's not just like a run by you guy. He, he won on dig. He won on the out route. He actually seems like a good route runner. I don't know if he can beat press coverage. Maybe, maybe, maybe not yet. I mean, I've seen him get locked up a little bit by Jimmy Ward and camp, but if you put him in the slot, if you give him a free release, yep. he's tough. And yeah. uh, if he can just catch the ball consistently, because he does kind of try to catch the ball with his chest a lot of the time. So did Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, I've seen him clank some balls off his chest, but I've also mm. seen him make really difficult catches with his hands. So he has potential. Yeah. I like him. Better and, more than I thought I would. And you can't coach confidence. That's the thing. I've always told people, like, I mean, I'm not a football coach, but I, I've, you know, one thing I've always said about players or athletes that I've really leaned on is that their confidence that you you can nurture it, but you can't really coach like th that ability to believe in yourself when other people aren't. And I think yeah. that's a guy that I think it's really cool to see from him. And I think it's a refrain for, for the, this whole class. Like I was really impressed from Friday night. And, and, and that's one thing I have to commend, you know, uh, the 49ers, Adam Peters and their scouting department is that it, it knock on wood, it's early, but I feel like they've, they're, they're, they they're help themselves out because the last two drafts, they've drafted a lot of guys on a team that allegedly didn't have many holes. They, they kind of filled the cabinet and they, these guys are going to maybe I'll make the team outside of a couple of them. When you talk about confident guys, it's interesting. Trey Lance, um, Javon Kinlaw, uh, Danny Gray, Brandon Ayuk. Three of those guys were junior college guys. Mm -hmm. And then Trey Lance got shut out. Yeah. Uh, they said he couldn't be a quarterback. So these are guys who had to be bet on themselves at a young age right. before they had any money. Yep. So Thomas says, any free agents you think that could possibly fix the O-line issues? That's the problem. It's hard finding street free agents who are good at this point because they're street free agents for a reason. They already got – they already brought in the best right tackle street free agent, Jordan Mills. Yeah. They already did that. And I just don't think, I mean, I have to rack my brain. It's a good question. Uh, I don't know Trent. who's available. If, if you've got an, if you've got an offensive yes. line, yeah. If you said there's somebody available at this point on the O-line, typically that's not an upgrade. Notice the SF Niners started copying your videos. Is that true? That's too bad. He shouldn't do that. He doesn't have my permission to do that. Don't do that. Stop. <laughs> Season six.